Yes, my little childhood world was insular. Small, white, American, middle-class provincialism safely tucked away from 1960s Detroit. And while I itched to break away on my own, through books, games, and later travel and teaching, my imagination had been scored and scarred with the fears without. Godzilla movies, dangerous Star Trek and lost in space aliens, bears, George Romero and hammer horrors, Carl Kolchak warned me that the world was full of night stalkers, and many of my childhood nightmares were from that wholesome TV show. But I would be all right, because I had the role models of great heroes to learn from. Captain Kirk, Will Robinson, Van Helsing, and of course, Steve Austin, the six million dollar man. Austin, played by young Lee Majors, worked for the Office of Scientific Investigation, a secret geek squad that definitely served my interests. And he was probably a little too self-idolizing in his constant flexing, winking, shirtless runs along California riverbanks. But he was also fearless in emotional control and a patriot. He protected us from outside threats. Now, my favorite episodes at age 12 were where Steve Austin meets another favorite of mine, Bigfoot. I watched those episodes and repeats and syndications over and over. I knew them inside and out. And just recently I had described them. The episode that I'm thinking of in particular actually even has that as kind of a theme. Really? That that he breaks out of his traditional government agent role and sides with what seems to be the enemies because there's something sympathetic in the other that he recognizes. So it's it's an interesting idea. He breaks out and sees something that his isolated world doesn't understand. See, this was the hero's path. Break away from the conservative forces that restrict us. It is our principles, our choices that make us who we are. But the more I reflected on it, Austin seemed to have it both ways. He was a government agent, a conservative force of mythic white stability, virile and physical, young and American. Through him and his values, I could determine which foreign influences were good and which were evil. I was buying an American idealism disguised as a man of individual conscience. In looking for heroes, we want to break away from old traditions in order to reclaim a new home or sense of stability. So, I decided to watch the episodes again. I needn't tell you that my memory of the episode, as vital as it was for me, is heavily flawed. Outsider Bigfoot and aliens are not righteous or in trouble. Aliens are indifferent or even antagonists to humans. The sexy alien desires, Steve. The humans are trying to solve problems with 50 megaton nukes. Steve supports it. Steve Austin escapes from the aliens. He comes back to teach them the right way to act. The aliens wipe his memory and choices so he cannot tell the government what happened. In other words, through the whole episode, Steve Austin is a loyal government agent, accepts no outsider ideas, and is deprived of his own choices. He isn't an agent with agency at all. But in the end, Steve Austin becomes the American superhero to everyone, the world and the universe alike, all in one key virtue, his loyalty, his allegiance to the established status quo. Allegiance is valued over agency. Now you see, I wanted the six million dollar man to, at least in these episodes, be a man of individual conscience who recognized something larger than the micro ideologies to which he's employed. And here it is. My hero has been revised from my 1970s self, the one insulated and protected, to my post 1980s self, one of autonomy and conscience. I had retrofit my childhood in order to hold it consistently accountable to the present. The old series had not sold me a traditional hero tale at all. What the media sold me is the desire for a consistent identity, a single ultimate boon narrative that would become who I am. 
I have acted to reassemble a stable self, a home identity, ironically one of agency, which paradoxically was bound by that narrative. I revised it, and unconsciously I sold it to myself. But let's not worry about it. After all, Austin is torn to pieces. But the media tells us we can rebuild him. Make him stronger. Better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Stronger.